Welcome to my channel Matt3D. Yes, I renamed the channel because it turned out that I will focus on 3D printing topics here. Still, some hardware related content may also show up. This is a tech channel, but main focus will be 3D printing. Maybe I will start another more versatile channel with the original crafting mat theme later. Another hint to this video. This was originally meant to be the next next one. But the video which should have been uploaded by now has to be delayed. It is about belt tension. I am still waiting for FL Sun support to reply. But hey! Today's video can also be interesting for you. If you run a 3D printer with original GitHub Clipper, then you also have main sail web interface available. When I started with 3D printing, I had a Marlin 3D printer and therefore a web interface would only have been an option with Octoprint. Clipper does not need that. You can access the printer in your network with any device and you can control your printer. I was using mainsail without even checking the setup because it seemed almost perfect right from the start. But meanwhile I found out that mainsail can be customized a lot and maybe you have already spotted the one or the other difference to what your mainsail looks like in the background. So let's check it. 8 useful settings in mainsail. Let's go! If you did a fresh install of GitHub Clipper, then your mainsail web interface may look similar to this. But there are tons of options to customize the appearance and even the function of mainsail hidden in the settings icon. For example, the tool head controls have three different layouts. I like the standard one, which is bars, but maybe you like circle better? Here it is. The beauty of the option system is that you change something and it will immediately take effect. No restart is needed. Maybe you prefer the cross layout? Give it a try. As already said, I like the original bar setup most, so I revert to this. But you cannot only change the layout and the looks of the buttons. If you are not happy with the given move distance for X and Y, mm, yes, you can change that to your needs. Instead of a button, um, which will move the tool head 100 mils, maybe you want one to move it 50 mils, okay? Delete that one and just add the one you want, like 50 mils. And check for the change and you can see it takes effect immediately. You have the 50 mils button here. For me it was okay, so I just change it back. Again, we have the 100 mils here. Mm, but wait, you also could go with only two buttons if you want. Only two buttons. For me it was okay, so I add this one again. You could do this with the C height as well. So only two buttons if you want. You can customize it. Of course with the C offset increments you can do that as well. And um, maybe even more interesting, we c you can do it with the uh, filament length, with the extrusion. For calibrating it, usually you need uh, 100 millimeters, and you could easily do that. You just delete the 50 mils, and you add 100, and from that moment on you just select it and you extrude it accordingly no need to press the button like four times <laughs> like i did it in my calibration video a 
Another interesting setting to customize is the dashboard. So go to the dashboard tab and this will show you an overview about how the elements on the web interface are arranged at the moment. And if you take a look, yes, this looks similar. So let's say you do not need the machine section in your web interface and you don't need Michelinus either. So you uncheck the two checkboxes, which will make them immediately disappear. But most likely you want the machine section, so I bring it back. Looking on the current layout, it seems a little bit shifted to the left column and yes, you guessed it. You can alter the order of the elements the way you want. So I distribute them a little bit more even. And it takes effect immediately. The machine tab is now here. Michelinus is on the right side now. And there is still another feature in here. The layout can be prepared differently dependent on the device it will be displayed on. So on a tablet, you can have a different layout compared to a mobile phone, which only has one column. For desktop, of course, this is meant for a PC. Uh, this has uh, two columns, but there is another option for desktop PCs. Uh, if they have a white screen uh, attached to it, then you can even have three columns. Now the macros, which have been part of my GitHub Clipper installation, really look unclear and confusing. Too many of them and there is no overview. When you check in the settings on the macro tab, the first and easiest uh, thing you can do with a simple management method is to disable the macros you do not need. So I will check the list and disable a lot of this stuff. LED for example, at least I don't need it. And anything related to setting maximum speed or acceleration, I also disable that. Mm. Uh, security offset, basically I would leave it, but in for demonstration now I turn it off. And anything related to time lapse, I also turn off. This is just the macros, time lapse is still working after that. And if you check back to main sail, then you can see that it looks a lot better already. But as always, you can do more than that. You can change to the expert management method and you can add a group. To start off with a group, you have to give it a name. And I will start with the printer control. And you could even restrict the condition when this group of macros is shown, like on idle, on pause printer or when printing. Uh, but for printer control, no, I will not restrict it. Uh, it will be shown anytime. After that, I just add the macros, which should be displayed in this group. Once you select a macro and add it to the group, it vanishes from the list to, yeah, to avoid uh, adding it twice to the same group. Yeah. Yeah. And when done, you hit close and um, yeah if you check uh, main sale again then you can see there is a new group 
with printer control. So, printer control, which is good. So, I go back and I add another group. And this time I want to uh, create a group for all the calibration macros, so I name it like uh, calibration. And as I do not want to spoil a running print, in that case I really disable this group when the printer is printing. And maybe even if it's paused. And again, I select the macros from the list to add it to my newly created calibration group. Same procedure as already done before. Offset, we need the offset. Yeah. Looks good. And as you can see, calibration group it shows up with the according uh, macros in it. And I do the same thing for uh, ADXL. Again, same procedure. Adding the macros. And close. And when checking back, uh, ADXL is also now shown at main sale. And even more, uh, you can even edit the order of the macro groups. They show up now here in the dashboard overview. And I don't want to have ADXL on top, I want the printer control on top, and then the calibration, and then ADXL, so that is easy doable. And uh, I also want to check on the group order because you can also do that so start print should before should be before end print and I did that so here you can see it start print is now the first end print is the second and I will do the same for uh, calibration because in calibration also there is a kind of order, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, wait a second. Uh, okay, I think I'm, I'm... I'm missing the end stops calibration. Okay, so I quickly add it. And it should be also in the correct order, so I change the order here. Now it's good. Delta calibration. Now it looks good. Yeah. And when checking back, that looks much better.
When starting off, there is already one preset in place and that is the cooldown preset. In the settings again, there is a tab presets to add further presets, which I think really comes in quite handy. You could even uh, edit the existing uh, cooldown preset, but I will add another one. I will give it a name like uh, bad 60 because I will set the bad temperature to 60 degrees in that preset. I will disable the extruder. This will get its own preset. And once this preset is selected, it will heat the bed up to 60 degrees. Yeah, uh, store preset. Yeah. After that, I do the same for the hot end. Uh, this time I disable the heater bed and I will set the extruder to 220 degrees and finally I name that one uh, hot end to 20. Yeah, you could also execute a custom G code and store it again. And uh, once this is done, you will see a presets uh, drop down list. And when clicking on it, uh, then you can select the preset you want. So, bad 60 will heat it heat the bed to 60 degrees and hot end to 20 will do the same for the hot end and I uh, need to wait a little bit but you can already see the temperatures rising so time to execute the cool down preset which of course is still there and this will set back the heatings to zero For time-lapse there is also a useful feature available in the time-lapse tab in the settings. As you can see you have several options to choose here, um, but the one which makes sense to me is the park tool head option. You could also choose from some preset positions where the tool head should be parked. When you do a time-lapse, this will make sure that the effector is always in the same position in the video, before a new picture for the time-lapse is taken. For sure this will slow down your print a little bit, but the time-lapse will look less hectic. The last two useful options can be found in the UI settings tab. When updating my V400 to GitHub Clipper, I was missing the webcam in the navigation bar as this was default for the FL Sun Clipper version. Here it is another option. When enabled, the large webcam view is back. And my final preference is to alter the navigation style in the UI settings tab. I think the icons in the navigation bar are already quite intuitive. I don't need the text, therefore I turn the text off, which saves some space and looks cleaner, at least to my eye. There you have it, 8 useful settings for mainsail in GitHub Clipper. Of course this is also a matter of personal preference, but I think it is clear now that you can customize mainsail to a high degree. Now what do you think? Did I miss out on a good option? If so, let me know in the comments below. I am always interested in improvements. The next content I will upload will be about belt tensioning. I also want to do a video about uh, pressure advance, which will be again more related to the FL Sun V400. And also I will revisit the input shaping topic. So there is more to come in the future but it will take some time. So as always, maybe I see you in my next video. Bye bye.